In this video, we'll talk about NMDA receptors or N-methyl D aspartate receptors. NMDA receptors are one type of ionotropic glutamate receptors. So obviously, they are good. They are found in the glutamatergic synapses. It's a ligand-gated ion channel and it regulates synaptic strength and plasticity. It is also involved in memory formation. We'll talk about NMDA receptor, its properties and its function in details. So stay tuned till the end of this video. The magnesium ion is present in the pore of NMDA receptor. And that is how it doesn't allow sodium ion to get in. Generally, when glutamate binds, sodium ion should get into the channel. But it is repelled by magnesium block. Now the magnesium block is removed when there is a substantial positive charge inside the membrane. That kind of repels the magnesium block and now the way is clear for the sodium ion to come in. So this is how the NMDA receptor works. But now let us ask that who is responsible for the removal of this magnesium block? And how the membrane becomes more positive such that the magnesium block is removed. Now let us zoom into the synapse and try to understand the functioning of NMDA receptor. So here you can see there is AMPA receptors which are another type of ionotropic glutamate receptors. AMPA receptors bind to glutamate and it leads to sodium influx inside the neuron. After a point of time, when sodium gets in, it makes the inside of the postsynapse positive. And that is why initially the NMDA receptor doesn't open and it cannot conduct sodium or other cations. But after a while, when substantial amount of sodium gets into the postsynapse, the inside becomes positive. In this scenario, the magnesium is rippled out and this block is removed such that the sodium ions can now easily diffuse inside the postsynapse. Not only sodium ions, but there would be a huge influx of calcium ions as well. And that is how the NMDA receptor works. Now, in order to understand the NMDA receptors, we have to understand its physiological properties, which can be done by whole cell recording. So, in this patch clamp recording, we are recording in a voltage clamp method. That means the voltage is fixed at a particular range and now we are recording the current through it. So let us do a thought experiment. Right now we are giving a 70 millivolt voltage. We are holding the potential at minus 70 millivolts. We see no current. We made it minus 50 millivolts. We see minuscule currents. Now at minus 10, there is some amount of current plus 5 the current direction is now reverted and there is substantial amount of current and the current increases with the positive voltage. So this is how we can understand the physiological property. But in order to represent this in a better fashion, people use the IV plot and the GV plot. So the same data can be represented in the IV plot where we plot current versus voltage. So as, as per our previous slide, we can understand in the negative voltages, beyond minus 50, there was no current. Now, be, I mean, beyond the point of membrane threshold, there was current, right? So, in the end part of the graph, here we can see almost no current at high negative voltage. There is some amount of inward current at a negative voltage, which is beyond the membrane potential or membrane threshold. Now, at a positive voltage, there would be outward current. So this is how we can understand the NMDA receptor characteristics. Similarly, if we look at the conductance versus voltage plot, we can also see the conductance of the channel is almost zero at negative voltage. So now we understand this particular graph in a biological manner. So look at this particular region of the graph. In this situation, what happens is the membrane is still negative. That means it cannot repel the magnesium ion. Instead, it is attracting the magnesium ion. And that is why cations cannot enter the postsynapse. 
look at this portion of the graph in this situation what happens is membrane potential is gradually becoming positive and when it is becoming positive it is repelling the magnesium ion and thereby the cations can get inside the postsynapse so this is how we can explain the iv curve of nmda receptor now just to summarize the channel properties the reversal potential of nmda receptor is 0 millivolt it conducts sodium potassium and also calcium and the single channel conductance is 50 picoseconds and it has a sustained uh, current properties that means it conducts for a long time compared to other ionotropic receptors even after end of the uh, particular stimulus the uh, the channel remains conductive now nmd receptor has multiple subunits such as nr1 nr2a to d nr 3a to b all of these so nmd receptor has multiple configurations such as diheteromeric nmd receptor configuration in this case at least nr1 receptor subunit has to be present and other things could be a combination of other other um, receptor subtypes such as nr2a to b to c etc or there could be also triheteromeric nmd receptors where one subunit would be nr2a to 2d one subunit would be nr3a to 3b and another subunit has to be nr1 so nr1 is the consistent subunit among all of these nmd receptors are known as coincidence detector that means they detect the coincidence of pre and post synaptic activity in other words they detect the synchrony between pre and post synaptic activity let me explain how so nmd receptor opening has two criteria first glutamate binding and second is the removal of magnesium block so glutamate binding reminds the nmd receptor about a presynaptic event so glutamate binding only happens when there is a glutamate re release in the presynaptic terminal so the presynaptic phenomena is defined by the glutamate binding and the postsynaptic phenomena is defined by the removal of magnesium block magnesium block would be removed when the postsynaptic is active enough that means the presynaptic activity and the postsynaptic activity are the coincidence between pre and postsynaptic activity is detected at the nmda receptor level so once this coincidence is detected there would be a huge influx of calcium ions inside the postsynapse and the calcium concentration would rise from 100 nanomolars to several micromolars this dramatic increase in the calcium concentration would activate several calcium dependent kinases such as cam k2 which phosphoryl phosphorylates plethora of downstream targets and that evokes several intracellular changes and it leads to change in synaptic strength in one case there could be potentiation of the synapse that means the synapse becomes stronger bigger and there are more postsynaptic receptors present in this particular synapse as you can see from this diagram an nmda receptor plays a crucial role in this process nmda receptor blockage can lead to behavioral defects in mouse in morris water maze a particular plat hidden platform is placed near a particular spatial queue in this case near this particular green spatial queue so the when we put the mouse it would struggle a little bit and then eventually it would understand that near this particular green landmark there is a hidden platform and next time when we put it it would straight go to that particular hidden platform so this is how they learn this particular task now this particular memory related task or navigation task is totally faulty when we block the nmd receptor by injecting a nmd receptor blocker so upon nmd receptor blockage there is no bias towards one particular quadrant the mouse spends or find spend its time to find the hidden platform in all the quadrant equally it cannot understand where it where the hidden platform is so overall nmd receptor are re really important for memory related task now there are other aspect where nmd receptors are involved such as long term potentiation let me explain you in a very simple manner what is long term potentiation so let's say we are stimulating this particular uh, presynaptic yellow neuron 
by a stimulating electrode and we are recording from the postsynapse and we are getting some postsynaptic potential like this. Now, there is a 100 hertz tetanic stimulation which is provided to the neuron. And after this 100 hertz protocol, we again put the similar stimulus. Now, after putting the similar stimulus, we get an augmented response shown by this red curve. And it is compared to the uh, previous response in green curve. So, obviously, this augmented response is known as potentiation. That means the synaptic uh, activity or the synaptic strength is boosted. That's why it is giving a particular response which has a higher amplitude. One other way of representing this data is to plot it over time. The slope of these postsynaptic potential is plotted over time. So, just after this tetanic stimulus, one can see that the postsynaptic potential has increased. So, the slope has also increased. And the increased slope persists over time and it is in order of minutes to hours. So, this is a long lasting change in the synaptic strength, which is known as long term potentiation. But the moral of the story is if we block NMD receptor and do this similar protocol, this particular protocol cannot evoke a potentiated response. That means NMDA receptor activity is crucial for this kind of potentiation or strengthening of the synapses. So overall in this video we looked at NMDA receptors and how they are, uh, they are one kind of like inotropic glutamate receptor. These receptors are found in glutamatergic neuron. It's a ligand gated ion channel and they regulate synaptic strength. They are, uh, we also looked at their electrophysiological property. We looked how they are involved in memory and synaptic plasticity. So I hope this was informative. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can get my social media links and which are linked in the description. So see you in next video.